Pharisees heard that Jesus was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized but his disciples. When the Lord learned of this, he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. Here's what's happening. This doesn't happen anymore in our day. But religious people are arguing with each other. Imagine that. Church people are going back and forth having this little debate. And so the Pharisees were the religious leader of the day, and they were threatened by Jesus because Jesus was doing great things, gaining popularity. And if Jesus was to ascend too much in the popularity polls, they would no longer have any followers, and therefore they would have no more power, and they would have no more authority, and so they would lose their places of prestige. Well... Jesus' popularity is on the rise, and the Pharisees are hearing about this. And so there's this religious rhetoric going back and forth, and how many is Jesus baptized, and how many is John baptized, and whose ministry is the biggest. And the Pharisees had their seat of power, their base of operations in Judea. And so I want you to notice what Jesus does when all that religious rhetoric, that political crap, that really has nothing to do with the gospel, starts breaking out. You notice what he does? He just gets out of town. You know what Jesus does when a church gets more focused on stupid stuff that doesn't matter than reaching broken people? He'll just leave that church. He'll just say, I'm out of here. Jesus said, y'all can argue about who's baptizing more. You can have that discussion all you want to. I'm out of here. I'm going to Samaria. Samaria is a place where many people who the Jews would consider unclean would live. They were like religious half-breeds, and the Jews thought they were unclean, and they didn't want to be very close to Samaritans because they felt like they might get contaminated. And Jesus said, if you guys are going to spread rumors, notice how the rumor isn't even true. <laughs> it wasn't even Jesus who was baptizing, but I've noticed that the truth really never gets in the way of religious people starting a good rumor. Have you ever noticed that? other day, one of our staff members was telling me that he was talking to a contractor who said, you know, I like your church. I like everything y'all are doing. There's one thing that really does bother me. And our staff member said, what's that? He said, well, I'll tell you, I don't know about if I could go to a church where the pastor drives a Lamborghini. <laughs> and see, I didn't know I had a Lamborghini. <laughs> that was good news to me. <laughs> Maybe one day I will have a Lamborghini, and if I do, I come by and give you a ride. But the fact is, you know, God kind of spoke to me in that moment, and it's like he said to me, Furtick, it don't really matter what you do or don't do as a pastor. You know, people are always going to say what they're going to say. You just live a holy life. Stay focused on what I'm called you to do. Let me build the church, and if you are faithful to me, and if you are faithful to my word, one day I'll give you a Lamborghini. I'm just kidding. He didn't say that last part, but that'd be cool. Uh, Jesus knew they wouldn't be happy about his success because they were Pharisees. They wouldn't be celebrating that he was baptizing more people than John. They'd try to kill him for it. Rick Warren taught me this. When you're small, people ignore you. When you're growing, they criticize you. And when you're big, they resent you. Jesus knew that, so he said, y'all can have your drama I'm going to touch a hurting person. Why? Because Jesus moves away from religious rhetoric and toward the needs of hurting people in our lives and in a church. Jesus doesn't play that game, and he doesn't bless those types of churches. Why am I taking time to talk about this? Because we could very easily become a church one day that gets caught up in debates and gets lost on side streets about things that don't matter while people are falling by the wayside, dying and going to hell, spending an eternity without Christ. And so you'll hear me from time to time just make a statement. Let's make sure we continue to be a church that God wants to bless. Reaching hurting people. I get this from time to time. Did you know you have a lot of hypocrites that come to your church? And they say it as an insult. I take it as a compliment. I don't want you to remain a hypocrite, but how can you change if you don't hear God's word? I'm glad you're here. It's like going to a doctor and saying, you know, doctor, you really ought to shut your practice down. You got a lot of sick people showing up in your waiting room. That's what it's all about. Jesus came to heal the hurting. 